Are Beast Cleave and TSG just going to crush everyone in Season 5 like they did 14 years ago? Will Warlocks even be viable? Because apparently some people in the comments don't think so. Today, we will answer all of your questions and predict the meta for Wrath Classic Season 5. First though, you might be wondering how we make our tier lists. Well, just like any video we make, we start by finding the best PvPers. Using our vast network of rank 1 and professional players, we will then spend multiple hours in a Discord call with them getting as much information as we can for each topic. For this video, we consulted with a handful of incredibly knowledgeable Wrath players and made a giant list of the best comps for every spec. Then, using their decades of combined expertise, we organized the list together to bring it to you. The players we consult have multiple rank 1 titles, tournament experience, and huge followings on Twitch, all working together to bring you the highest quality instructional content WoW PvP has to offer. And using these same players, we've already developed hundreds of guides over at skillcap.com. Yes, right now you can learn the same damage rotations, defensive techniques, and secret min-maxing tips all in our amazing class courses. Our videos are designed to get you ahead of the competition as quickly as possible. And with a money back guarantee, we are confident in your ability to see huge rating gains this season. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below for an exclusive discount to get started. Let's kick things off with the S tier, which includes a short list of the absolute best comps in Season 5. And just to be clear, being on the S tier means having really great consistent matchup spreads across the board with very few hard counters. Before you freak out, there are two comps in particular that you might think are missing from the S tier, but we will be including them in a list of honorable mentions. Anyway, you're probably familiar with our first meta composition, RMP. No matter what expansion you play, it is almost guaranteed that this comp finds itself in the high tiers. In Wrath, RMP plays remarkably similar to its more modern expansion variants, setting up kills with cross CC, then stalling with peels while waiting for DRs to reset. But you already knew that. In Season 5, there are two reasons why RMP will be so dominant. The first is the fact that relative damage values are at their absolute highest, due to lower resilience, stamina, and armor across the board, all of which makes Shadow Dance damage disproportionately strong. In addition to this, RMP does insanely well into any Resto Druid team. Unlike Priests and Paladins, Druids don't have any passive stun reduction, and their primary defensive cooldown isn't nearly enough to counter RMP burst, especially since it cannot even be used while silenced. This gives RMP an insane matchup spread into an entire class of healer, and although it may struggle with highly aggressive melee cleaves, it will still have a place in the meta for Season 5, where it will be at its absolute strongest. Not all hope is lost for Resto Druids, however, as they will have an S tier comp of their own, LSD, which is Destro Lock Ellie Shaman, for legal reasons. This comp works equally well with a Holy Paladin as well. Anyway, who would have guessed that the expansion's most dominant wizards would find a place on the S tier? This comp has one of the most effective zoning tools in WoW history damage. Yes, both Destro Warlocks and Elemental Shamans are able to absolutely melt any target in the open, which actually makes them really good into any melee cleave. Remember that magic dispels in Wrath are quite sparse, which makes things like an AoE Earthbind root highly effective at denying double melee from ever staying connected onto a target. When someone tries to tell you that Warlocks just die into Warriors, simply remind them that melee cleaves just die into Lock Shaman. This is especially true as the Holy Paladin variant of this comp, which brings a wider array of anti-melee tech to the arena. And finally, we have the last comp in the S tier, Ret Paladin, Mark's Hunter, Disc Priest. Oh, and it's a two-handed Ret, just to be clear. Now, before you zoom into the comments trying to debate our expert players, hear us out. PHP is super well-rounded. Hunter and Paladin provide some great defensive coverage into melee cleaves thanks to their arsenal of defensive cooldowns and ability to kite, while Disc Priests are one of the most efficient healers in the spell cleaves due to double magic dispel and the efficiency of Prayer of Mending. One key matchup for PHP is RMP, where the combination of double defensive magic dispel is a massive execution test for a rogue mage, requiring them to play incredibly coordinated on goes. But even if a setup is successful, Roar of Sacrifice perfectly trades one to one into Shadow Dance, which again is an easy punish for any RMP who can't cross CC perfectly. With that, we have our absolute best comps for Season 5. And before you get out your pitchforks, we want to remind you that all of these setups are incredibly consistent, and RMP will actually be at its absolute peak in Season 5, despite falling off slightly later in the expansion. But now it's time for some honorable mentions. First up, Beast Cleave. This is arguably one of the most controversial choices we've ever had to make on a tier list. Is Beast Cleave insanely good? Of course. Is it at its best in Season 5? Yes. Does it beat RMP? It should. But is it consistent enough to be number one? Probably not. Look, the main strength of the comp is how unrelenting it is into low armor targets. Anything wearing less than a plate armor will disintegrate into the Wolves Lust BM combo. 
And remember, damage will be at its relative highest in Season 5, making this comp extra threatening in the early expansion. The biggest obstacle of Beast Cleave are other meta comps with Paladins, including PHP, PHDK, Turbo Cleave, Thunder Cleave, or even TSG. With multiple team-wide defensive cooldowns, Paladin teams can often trade into Beast Cleave and shut down its single win condition. But for short and explosive games, there aren't many comps that can truly match Beast Cleave pressure, which makes it great for general ladder grinding. For another honorable mention, we have Thundercleave. Of every melee in the game, warriors definitely scale the best with gear. In later seasons, once higher amounts of armor penetration and better itemized PvE gear is available, warriors become the most oppressive melee in the game, and Thundercleave is arguably the epitome of Wrath of the Lich King in Season 8. Throughout the entire expansion though, warriors deal enormous amounts of pressure and are joined by the disruption and utility of an elemental shaman and the defensive efficiency of a holy paladin, all of which come together to form a massive brick wall for many compositions. This comp is super well rounded and will eventually become a staple later into Wrath, but will still be highly competitive in the early expansion. Anyway, with our honorable mentions out of the way, let's blaze through some of the other A tier comps which will define the meta in Season 5. First up, we have some Death Knight comps. DKs are quite flexible in 3v3 and can play super aggro compositions like TSG or even more setup based comps with elemental shamans. While they don't offer a true MS effect, DKs can contribute massive amounts of damage in Arena, and as we showcase in our OP abilities video, Summon Gargoyle is a huge part of that. Playing with a Holy Paladin in 3v3 adds to the offensive toolkit of these comps, as Grip into Stun and Strangulate are a bread and butter combo for setting up kills. In any case, don't sleep on the massive amounts of damage these popular DK comps will be dishing out in Season 5. And speaking of raw damage, Feral Druids will be a bit of a wild card in the early expansion. Feral has some of the highest sustained damage output in the game, but with one huge problem, it simply dies in cat form. Yes, ferals are one of the squishiest specs in the game, which is why they generally want partners who can support them with peels, or who can get trained instead. This typically means playing with either a frost mage or marks hunter. Both of these comps are setup based, doing small bursts of damage combined with CC and then avoiding as much pressure as possible until it can be done again. And with feral covered, we have a slew of hunter comps that belong in the A tier. First up, we have a triple DPS comp, Beast Cleave with a Ret Paladin. Yes, this is actually something you might encounter. It doesn't lose out on too much by swapping the Holy Paladin for Ret and instead gains a ton of extra damage. Two other hunter comps you should expect to see include PHDK and even Prot Paladin. Mark's Hunter, Resto Shaman. One unique feature of the Survival Hunter variant of PHDK is Ebon Plaguebringer, which increases a huge chunk of damage dealt by the Hunter since most of their toolkit is magic based. But no matter which one of these Hunter comps you run into, anticipate a whole lot of damage, especially in the earlier stages of Season 5 when resilience is at its lowest. Next up, we have a whole bunch of spell cleaves to fluff out the A tier. If you're coming from a retail background, you might not be fully prepared for the raw strength of wizard cleaves in Wrath Classic. Most of the comps we have listed here essentially do the same thing, which is to blast down targets in the open, relying more on the threat of raw damage as a zoning tool, rather than trying to carefully set up CC chains. You will also see a whole lot of resto shamans with these setups, since bloodlust is so disproportionately strong for double caster, especially as haste values gradually increase as the season progresses. Even though the these cleaves lack true healing reduction effects, that hardly matters when some of them are fully capable of taking someone down from 100 to 0 in a single global with synchronized damage. Moving along to the other side of the spectrum, we have some melee cleaves. Turbo is something you should already be familiar with, and just like Thunder Cleave, it is a highly disruptive and relatively bulky setup, just with more focus on aggression. Ret Paladins playing with either a conventional or one-handed build will also have some A-tier representation, with both PHP and Ret Rogue, which has a mysterious comp name that we can't remember. Finally, rounding out the A tier, we have some miscellaneous melee caster setups that a lot of us boomers might remember. Here you will find RPS, RLS, and Assassination RMP. Now, in the past, these comps were wildly popular in old MLG tournaments. Even though tier lists weren't popular at the time, we would guess that many of them would have shown up on the S tier here or there. Now, don't get us wrong, these are all great comps even to this day, but as the game has quietly progressed in the background for over a decade, people have found more consistent comps built around Arms Warriors, Elemental Shamans, and Holy Paladins. In any case, if you're looking for a blast from the past, any of these comps should be highly competitive in Season 5. And with that, we have our entire A tier for Early Wrath Classic. Remember, every comp on this list is highly competitive. Even though these aren't S tier, they are still all fully capable of reaching rank 1 on the ladder, and you can expect to see success grinding rating with any of these compositions. 
And just a reminder, even if you play a high tier comp, it doesn't mean you will instantly win every game. But by using the class guides over at Skill Caps, you can set yourself up for success by learning the same damage, healing, and playstyle strategies used by the best players. Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer and gain 400 rating guaranteed by actively using the guides at skillcap.com. Anyway, with our high tiers out of the way, let's venture down to the mid and low tiers with some off meta comps. Any of the mid tier comps we will mention are still fairly competitive. Even though they might not be capable of pushing rank 1 on the ladder, they are perfectly suited for ratings up to gladiator and can even be quite fun if that's what you're into. The mid tiers are where you will find both arcane and frost mage comps. It is pretty accepted that frost is the main pvp spec, but these off meta picks all offer some unique options. Arcane mages do an insane amount of damage if left to free cast, and can even slot into comps like RMP and Warrior Priest. Fire, on the other hand, is more of an AoE damage focused spec and works well with warlocks or even elemental shamans. One unique thing to note is that fire actually has a disarm effect with fiery payback, which makes them a bit more durable into melee DPS. In any case though, both of these off-brand specs will be viable in Season 5, though have weaker comp options overall compared to Frost. The B tier is where you will also find Balanced Druids. Unfortunately, Boomkins are one of the few specs that rely almost exclusively on one gimmicky spell to win the game, which of course is Starfall. While its damage is insanely strong, it can simply be countered by CCing the Boomkin or just line of sighting until the effect expires. In any case, Boomkins might find the most success with a Shadow Priest for some extra offensive AoE pressure, or even as triple DPS playing with a mage and rogue. Unfortunately, the mid tiers is where you will also find some other old timer comps, most notably Warrior Lock. Look, the WLD and WLP certainly had their time to shine in original Wrath Classic. They might be a bit too outdated for the modern meta. One extreme difficulty of WLD in particular is the lack of a spammable magic dispel. While Fell Hunters can dispel magic debuffs, there is simply too much dispel protection in the game for it to be reliable, meaning warriors won't be able to do warrior things while playing this setup. And finally, for you prot enthusiasts, the mid tiers is where your comps will be during Season 5. Prot Warriors in particular might find some difficulty in Season 5, since their damage will be much lower due to armor pen and block values not being high enough during the early expansion. In any case, expect some run-in with comps like ATC and Mancleave, and occasionally even Prot Thundercleave, for one of the most insane snooze fests of your arena life. At this point you might be wondering why we haven't mentioned Combat Rogue, Demo Warlock, or even Holy Priest. This might be a topic suited for an entire video, but each one of these specs are just too gimmicky and not reliable enough to make it to the mid and high tiers. Combat Rogue has one win condition, Killing Spree, and outside of this is way too squishy into other melee. Demo Warlocks are more or less the same, having their entire toolkit tied into Metamorphosis, making them the BM Hunter of Wizards. And finally, while Holy Priests might have some amazing defensive cooldowns, their healing output is mediocre and lacks dispel protection, making them super vulnerable to purges and interrupts. All three of these specs would likely be best suited for highly aggressive comps that look to win the game in a single interaction. In any case though, anything outside of the B tier is really pushing the limit for viability inside of Arena. But we want to know what you think. What comps will you be playing in Season 5? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, consider subscribing as we will be providing more content for all things related to WoW PvP. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.